<sighs> All right, we are live with episode something or another of Beastly Thoughts Live. One thirty three. One thirty three. You know, I type it in no. the in the title every time, right? And then I forget. But by the time, because we start talking about stuff before the show, you know, the pre show, yeah. the yep. pre show warm up, you know, and then it's gone. It's just fucking gone. <laughs> Briar, he'll understand in about uh, twenty five years when he's our age. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I was I was dumb when I was a kid too. Oh. <laughs> like, it's just been a flat what? line. <laughs> like, it's not up, that I'm man? getting senile, it's just I started I started here and that was pretty low. <laughs> that, was, that was that was the precipice right there. Yeah. Just, I think I peaked no. when I was like four years old. <laughs> I was pretty on my game as a four-year-old. Now, now you know, by the time you're four, you learn more than you do for the rest of your life. So <laughs> See, you there you go. <laughs> I was killing it as a four-year-old. It's been downhill ever since. <laughs> ABCs, you learn how to walk, you learn how to scream and say no. That's all you need to know. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That's all we've been doing ever since, man. Right. No, <laughs> this is bad. No. <laughs> yeah. I am so happy to see you guys. I don't know what's happened this last week. It seems like the longest week of my life. Figuring out the coming week with Thanksgiving coming up. Well, at mm -hmm. least for us in America, Robbie. Sorry. It's on my birthday. Yeah. Oh, hey, really? My birthday, yeah. Happy birthday. So what do you guys do when you turn 13 in Canada? I'm trying to imagine. I'm, I can't remember. Isn't it like a bar mitzvah or something? Oh. <laughs> Happy uh, birthday, Robbie. That end call button is looking pretty good right about now. <laughs> revenge. Really revenge. Not gonna lie. So this week has been a very, very weird week for me. I, I got very little gameplay done. Uh I did play two games in particular that I want to talk to you guys about when we do our I guess we can go into what okay. we've been playing now. Uh, and, and I want to give you the reasons as to why I was unable to really get into the gaming news and right. figure out what's been going on because I see our, our news. A lot of stuff has happened in the last seven days, and I had no idea. The first culprit for me not gaming this week is I had a lot of things going on this week at work that took a lot of time. I'm mm -hmm. talking about doing 12-hour days because the the coming week, we have customers who need certain things done. And so I'm in my lab. I run a laboratory doing all this work all day long. And by the time I get home, I just don't feel like playing anything. You're tired. Also, yeah, it happens when you get our age, Brian. Just right. tired for no reason. Uh, the, the other thing that kind of took a lot of my time is... Sucks being and, and this dinosaur. is something... Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> another thing that killed my time is my wife and I got into a, a TV show on Netflix and I normally don't get into TV shows, but uh -huh. we're on the very last episode of it now. It's called Black Mirror. Yeah. And, my God. Uh, and for the people who haven't seen it, of course, I won't spoil anything. But it's each episode is self-contained. It's like a modern take on maybe um, Twilight Zone or um, what are some of the other shows? The uh, Outer Limits. It's yeah, something very sure. similar to that. Very futuristic. What was and that Stephen watch King show in like the 80s? It really reminds me of that one. Which one? I can't Stephen remember King? the name of it. It'll come to me later. But it's really, really good. It was it, every episode had our brains firing off, and so mm -hmm. between that, throughout the week, up until the very last episode, which I'm going to watch after this this show, uh, I've also kind of snuck into a game that I've had for about two years I never played, and this is was in between us watching episodes because you know I have a pregnant wife, so it's lots of bathroom trips and lots of cooking dinner for kids and yelling at kids. So in between episodes. I, I went to my PS4 and I, I was scrolling through my games. I was like, I don't want to play the same old stuff. Yeah. Let me see some of these older games. And I ended up playing Steam World Dig. And I know this sounds crazy. That's a but fun the game, game. The game is incredible. I beat it this morning. Did you? So that's, yes. Steam World Dig is very similar to Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, or even Ori and the Blind Forest. It's you're this little robot uh, in a steampunk setting and you just dig through the ground and you find ore and materials. You sell them. You do all types of upgrades. And it just it's so rewarding playing it. Everybody in my house is playing it. I bought it for my sons today for their PlayStation 4. It was just really, really fun. Mm -hmm. And so if you guys were able to get that on your PlayStation Plus, uh, I would say probably 18 months ago. Yeah, I played free. that. Yeah, it was I liked it a lot. I didn't it, finish it, it though. Yeah. 
once you get into it and you start unlocking and you see all the abilities this little damn robot has, you feel like a badass. And it was really, it was very, very fun. I know this is really weird because there's so many new games to talk about. Oh, well, it's a game good I, game though. It, it, it's, it's a tight I, I, no, game. I, you know, it's like you just keep digging down and keep digging down. You got to remember your path because you got to go back up every once in a while. I don't and, remember. I mean, Why do you have to go back up? Was it to... You go back up because as you you drill down through the dirt, you know, yeah. dig through the world, you find uh, materials, ores, and different types of uh, like lithiums and and uh, chromium stuff that you can sell to the right. shops above. And then you when buy you fuel top, when you get up there, right? When you go up to the top, you can buy, uh, you can replenish your health, you can buy water for your steam, and you can upgrade your abilities like double jumps, super fast. You get this yeah. drill that can drill through the ground really fast. It's really it's awesome the amount of things that you get. And that last boss boss fight I'm going to upload to my channel because it was insane. I was like, holy God, this is crazy. <laughs> my wife was grabbing my arm. It just It's very challenging. There's many ways for you to die. You can buy teleporters from the shop so you can drill down to anywhere you want to go and you can drop a teleporter. You can teleport right to the top from there, teleport right back to it. It's just so many different things you can do in Steam World. Dude. There's a little story was, as well. Yeah, it's a story. You're trying to figure out what happened to... Uh, right. I guess like a digger like you uh, and who just went down there and disappeared. And at the further you go, you find lost technology that nobody knows about. And these old caverns that are very futuristic. And when you walk into them and you put pretty much put your body into them, this old technology assimilates onto you and you become more powerful and you're able to do all kinds of new things. Yep. It was really fun. I beat it today. No, my daughters are playing it. My wife's playing it. My boys, I bought it for them today because they are watching it in between us playing, watching this show throughout the week. And everybody fell in love with it. It's really, it's a great game. And I, I can't say that enough because I actually played it and beat it. And I didn't intend, had no intention of doing that. So it was one of those things where I started playing it. And I was like, wait a minute, this is really fun. It's very rewarding to get these new abilities because you see places that you can't get to. There's certain materials you can't break through with your pickaxe. You can't drill through it. But when you upgrade your pickaxe to a different type of thing like silver or platinum or gold, you're able to go through it and you get faster drills and you get double jumps. You can it's just all kinds of crazy stuff. But it's it's a it's a great game. I know it is, it's a good game. Now the other game that I've been playing uh, that I I gotta say I'm not liking as much as I used to is Overwatch. Uh, Overwatch just uh, had a, I want to say six or seven gig uh, update mm -hmm. because they introduced a new character and I don't it was know her 10 name. Ten gigabytes actually, I think it was bigger than that. Oh, I might be thinking about, about the hours it took. Yeah, I think I might be thinking about the hours <laughs> it took. Um, it 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 is a huge uh, update and I didn't get it. Kate, she uploaded it. I mean, updated it while I was at work and so she wanted to play with me and we couldn't play together. I never got a chance to play with the new character. Because now they've changed the play mechanics to where you can't pick the same character on the team anymore. Yeah. Very, very frustrating. So if, if someone picks your main character like my Diva or uh, my Mei, I've got to pick somebody else. And basically you're left, if you come into the game late, you're left with one of the lamest characters. And that's really, really frustrating. But we played for about five or six hours since that update, and I still never had a chance to play with a new character. So the game still feels just as fun as it always did, barring the fact that you can no longer have a whole team of a certain character just to try it out. Even if they you play like the casual playlist, I I I want the quick play. Quick, quick play. play, really? Nope, that can't sucks. do it anymore. Yes, it does. It it really sucked because many of those games, she wasn't able to pick her character, I wasn't able to pick mine. I felt like somebody was hitting up, down, left, right, VA, select, start to get the new character before we even had a chance to pick characters. It's like as soon as it opened up, she was already blacked out. And But that was the other game I played. I didn't have nearly as much fun playing that this week because I couldn't pick my character lots of games. But that and SteamWorld Dig, and of course Black Window. If you have not seen it on Netflix, trust me, watch it. Watch the first episode or two. Let us know in the comments if you like it. I promise. Yeah, it's you. pretty cool. It's it's a thought provoking show. Some of the episodes are better than others. Absolutely. Uh, and some of the some of the premises are almost like a Saturday Night Live skit where, you know, like you you get the whole premise in like the first two minutes, and then the rest of the thing is just like, okay, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but yeah. some of them are long. really good. Yeah. Uh, there's some one. There's one that's like in a future future society and like. He, this guy basically lives in a room that's surrounded by screens, and he has to pay yeah. to not watch ads. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's a cool show. It, I'll, I'll summarize what you're talking about. It's just one episode where there's this guy, and you're confined to this little room. The only time you get out of this room is to ride these exercise bikes. And riding the exercise bikes is how you accrue money. 
Yeah. This it generates really electricity does. for the whole community. And, and that's and, how you get paid. And yeah. the only thing you can buy is basically DLC for your life. It doesn't really <laughs> exist. Yeah. You have an avatar that is you, kind of like Xbox 360 avatar. That's a representation of you. And you can buy new clothes for him, new hat. You know, just crazy stuff like that. And, of course, you could use your money to buy fruit out of the vending machine. And that was pretty much it. But the, the story that happened there was really incredible. Great show. Now yeah. let's talk about what you guys have been doing. Let's step into the 90s because I just took us back a couple of years <laughs> talking about Steam World Dig. What have you guys been playing in the last seven days? Um, I got a new PC I, I told you guys last week. Um, yeah. And one of the things that... I wanted to do with it was just check out like what how powerful is this thing right it's like you just want to know like how good is this pc so yeah. i decided you know one of the most challenging games to run over the last couple of years that's come out is witcher 3 so i decided i'd download that i haven't played it yet i completely missed it in 2015 and it has got my hooks i think i put like 15 hours ish no. into it yeah. yeah like i have really enjoying the shit out of that game the uh one of the things I didn't realize about it, what I thought it was going to be was a fairly straightforward role-playing game that just had good mechanics. Um, one of the things I didn't realize about it was that the whole world is basically set up in this way that everything is a gray area. Like, every decision you make, there is no, there is no like, Mass Effect, like, Paragon, or you know, what's the opposite of Paragon? You know, it's like, it's not black and white. It's not good or evil. It's these decisions that are always these gray areas. Like... One decision has you choosing, like, this this woman, this is a really small side quest, so it's not a spoiler. It's a little spoiler, but it's a really small side quest. Optional side quest. The game's a couple quest. years old, I'm sure. And it's, yeah, it's play. a couple years old. So there's this one quest where you find this guy, and, like, his girlfriend disappeared. He's a hunter. Uh, he went out to hunt, and while he was gone, his girlfriend disappeared. So he tells you, you know, like, you, you go in and investigate where this girl went. And uh, he tells you, go ask her sister, you know, they're really close. So she says, I think I saw her walking over that way. Go go check out that way. And you kind of got like these witcher senses that kind of operate like the Batman senses. And you go yeah. over there, you find her dead body. And you, 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 you realize that she's actually killed by a werewolf. So you go back and you talk to the guy. And, you know, you, you, it comes to, it, you basically figure out that the dude, her husband is a werewolf. Mm-hmm who chains himself up at night, at night so that yeah. he can't hurt anybody. But his wife, or his, his wife's sister, was in love with the loose. dude. Mm -hmm. So she, she drug her sister there, and he killed her by accident. You know, it wasn't, uh, the whole thing was an accident. So she basically killed her sister, trying to you know, get a hold of her sister's husband. And it was like, and then you've, you're faced with the decision, what do I do? Do I let her go? who killed her sister, who really actually kill killed her sister, yeah. to, and kill the werewolf, or do I let the werewolf, who's absolutely furious with the sister, kill the kill sister? Her. And it's like, it's like, uh, I mean, it's a uh, tough decision, <laughs> right? And it's like, great. over and over and over, you get the same decision, over, like, you get the similar kind of gray area decisions. There's much bigger ones that are huge plot twists that I don't even want to talk about, but... Um, you know, I'm playing the newest version. It's like the the game of the year edition that came with all the DLC, and a lot of it has been patched, so you can. Um, uh, the, it feels like the controls have been fixed uh, compared to what it came out with. They're still a little oh, funky, good. and the combat's not amazing. The you combat know, was what threw me off of that game. That's why I couldn't get into it. The combat was just not good. I didn't think it was very good at all. It it, it you want it to feel like Batman combat, like the Arkham series combat, and it's just it never reaches that level. But it's good enough. It's better, to, in my opinion, than something like Skyrim, where I I feel like a you know a GI Joe figure with action grip, just like doing this over and over again. Oh, oh, yes. You know, like you're rolling around, you're you know you're you're parrying, you're you know, you're doing stuff. It, yeah, it's fun. Fire. Yeah, it works itself out. Yeah, it, no. it's it's okay, but it's the story, man. The story is gripping, and every side quest is well written. It's like there's no a lot of these RPG games. I'm running around and I'm just doing the side quests because I want to get quest. leveled up, right? I just want to get leveled up. I don't really care. I'm not even paying attention. I'm listening to music or I'm listening to a podcast while I'm grinding. These ones, I'm not listening to a music. I'm not listening to a podcast because I actually care about what these people have to say because I know there's a fucking retarded goddamn decision coming up at the end of it that I don't. That <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you find that goblin lady with the titties that hang down to her kneecaps yet? Yeah. That's a disgusting creature. Now, <laughs> you sound very similar to my wife. She's That's the one game that I probably put Tickle 15 titties. hours into and, and I didn't complete. I don't know what happened to me. Maybe I was just too in love with The Last of Us at the time. But she's still pissed off at me for not beating that game. She beat that game. She, I don't know if she 100 percent of it, but she probably put 100 hours into that game. Uh, and she wants me to get back into it. You said you put 15 into this. Is this something you're going to stick with? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely finishing this game. I'm really enjoying okay. it. I've been playing it. I've been so busy this week. I've had, I, it's hockey season right now, so I've been doing a lot of hockey photo shoots, which are at night, which has just kept me very, very busy. Um, but when I come home, I've been putting a couple hours in, and all of a sudden, two o'clock in the morning, I'm like, "Oh god damn!" <laughs> you know, like it just go time flies when I'm playing. The reason this game. I asked is because to me, this is something. This is we we could do this as a team, okay? Robbie, you didn't beat The Witcher. It's an amazing game. I didn't beat it. Briar's playing it. I'm going to start playing it. I'm going to start playing it this week, and I'm going to get into it and, and really experience it because that's still hailed as best game of what 2015 by far. Yep. Oh, by yeah. many many people uh and and if you're going to get into it and play it i want to actually have this dialogue back and forth over the next couple of weeks talking about it so i promise you guys i will starting tomorrow start playing the witcher 3 robbie hopefully you can join in because i know you didn't beat the game um yep. but th the thing i want to ask you about this barring that uh is how it how is it playing on your new pc that's what kind of what you opened up with oh uh, yeah so handling? Um, so the PC I got is kind of interesting, right? It's a, it's a, it's a really high end, um, processor, but the graphics cards, instead of going like a really high end graphics card, uh, it's much cheaper. And they put two 480s in there, two AMD 480s running Crossfire. Um, and I don't love the Crossfire configuration. Uh, I find it's a little bit buggy, it, you know, for some games it works really well for some games it doesn't. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to rip the two 480 Crossfire or two 480 cards out of there. Uh, put them on eBay and then buy uh, a uh, 1060 or a 1070, an, an NVIDIA 1070. Wow, that's, uh, that's just have power. one card in there, which I think is just it's easier, it's simpler. Yeah, compatibility can be weird when you have two video cards. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like The Witcher, mm -hmm. it runs. I could run it in 4K at 30 frames per second, or I can run it. Uh, wow. I can run it at 60 frames per second at like, uh, it's like 1440. Um, but in, in fact, what I end up doing most of the time is running it at 1080 because it just runs smoother and it crashes less. Mm, okay. So, I'm just out of curiosity. What is the price range of the 1070? Uh, 1070, I think is around 400. Fuck a doodle do. Yeah, it's not, that's, not cheap. And that's like the... Yeah. That's not even top of the line, man. 1080 yeah, is... 1080 is 1080 around 600. Is the best, yeah, yeah 600. the new Titan X, the Pascal one, is 1200 And there's a 1080 Ti yeah. that's expected to come out relatively soon. Which That might be even more. What I'm hoping yeah. is the 1080 Ti will drop the price on the 1080. <laughs> like $1,200 for a video card. That's pretty yeah. ridiculous. It is top of the line, this, though. This, we're on a, uh, you know, a spinning carousel when it comes to consoles and PCs. There's no way they'll ever catch up. Not with stuff... We're in the same spot we were in 10 years ago. I mean, is even with the PS4, the PS4 Pro, the Xbox Scorpio, they'll never be able to catch up with this. It's uh, insane. I think you're right about that, but I also think that over time, the gap between console and PC is, I think it's gotten smaller. I think it well, is over time. I think it'll, it'll continue to get smaller with iterative change, as long as that iteration is keeping up with the Joneses. Because, I mean, God, a few the years Joneses. ago... Yeah, are there Joneses in Canada? A few years ago, um, you know, the, the NVIDIA 970 was good, you know, two, three mm -hmm. years ago. It was like the yep. shit. Now it's like bottom of the barrel. You know, I got a 970 in my laptop. And when I bought it earlier this year, I was like, yes, I finally arrived. And now I feel like I just grabbed this PC out of a box on the side of the, you know, the side of the road. And now I'm playing with trash. That's, it, that's like the double edged sword of the PC, though, isn't it? It's like, he, you gotta upgrade so often. You gotta well, you don't have to, right? It's like I'm sure that you can you can play on that 970s for Raider a long time. Runs fine. And yeah, as long as it looks fine, you don't have to play every game on ultra settings, especially if you're no, a console I'd go gamer. With frame rate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Just... Frame rate to me looks way better. And in the Witcher, it makes a difference when I'm in the combat. You know, it just it feels yeah. smoother and I, I feel like I'm I have better reaction time because I I see the bad guys telegraphing their their attacks better. 
Um, so I, you know, I don't know. It's a funny thing. I'm, I'm still a console gamer at heart. I still like to put my feet up. I still like to lean back with a cons with a, you know, a controller, controller in my hand. Yeah. I did, you know, I hooked up an Xbox 360 controller up for Witcher Three, and it works great. Or I'm sorry, uh, Xbox One Xbox controller. Xbox One. Yeah, it works yeah. great. You know, it's it, it's basically a console experience. Briar loves now, that Xbox One controller. But what, except what, what, that I'm I'm constantly dealing with like you know this little graphic slider and that little graphic slider. <laughs> yeah. What uh, uh, my question for you, Briar? Um, I completely lost tr train of thought. I don't know what happened. I just had a brain fart, and it's coming out of my ear right now. <laughs> Robbie, your brain you farts like... out your ear. What? Hey, it's got to come out of somewhere, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brain fart. I mean, there's yeah. only so many orifices available. I mean, maybe your nose, maybe your ears, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to smell that shit. All right. <laughs> Robbie. I'd rather hear it than smell doing? it for sure. <laughs> a brain fart. <laughs> what have you been doing for the last seven days, Robbie? So, this week, as far as, uh, as gaming goes, I haven't been playing much, but I have been playing one game that I am really surprised by and I'm really enjoying a lot. Uh, the open beta for Steep just came out this week. You guys remember that? The Ubisoft Extreme Sports game was announced at E3. Mm -hmm. The beta's going on right now. And uh, I didn't expect to enjoy it, but it's a lot of fun. It's called Steep? Yeah. Do you guys remember the game? You don't remember Yeah, it? it's the one with the, uh, like, you can snowboard, you can do the, like, the squirrel Skiing. suit thing. and Yeah, or you can do wingsuit gliding. Yeah, and it's yeah. online oh, okay. multiplayer. It's one seamless world. Honestly, it reminds me of Destiny, the way the multiplayer works, because I'll be, like, skiing down a mountain, and these people will just appear in front of you, and you can just invite them in your group, and you can just ski together and stuff. It's really fun. My favorite thing has to be the wingsuit gliding. That is so intense, like, just flying down a mountain, trying not to crash. It's a lot of fun, man. It's really, really cool. And the I like beta's the going on for this? Because this game does look kind of interesting to me. It looks like uh, similar to something like, a, you know, like a low-stress game like Amped or, you know, those dumb snowboarding games I used to play. Yeah, it's really fun. And it's exactly, it's something we haven't had for a long time. I think there hasn't been many extreme sports games in like 10 years. It's been a long time since there's been a good one. So. This is this is off the point of what you're talking about, but it really isn't. This morning, I put in the very first PlayStation One disc that ever came with the PS One. Yep. It's uh, it's called PS One PlayStation Picks. It's a blue disc. I showed it to you before, Briar. I had that one. I remember and that. It's the, ver it's the very first one. I was oh. playing ESPN Extreme Sports. <laughs> oh, I remember that. And, and, and all you were doing was skateboarding down the road, kicking the shit out of people. When you said that, yeah. I was like, wow, what are the chances of that? <laughs> but con but continue, Robbie. I did see this trailer uh, when Ubisoft showed it. The beta is for how long, and how do you get in on the beta? I think today's the final game, and it's an open beta. Like You just have to go to the store and download it. It's as simple as that, and everyone can play it. And it's really fun. I like and it you, a lot. And you tell us the day it ends, Robbie? You I'm sorry, we're doing the show thing. Thoughts, public, public DJ service man, announced. DJ man saying it ends tomorrow. All right. Tomorrow. Yeah, you can play it today. So definitely get it on that, though. It's really fun. And I remember, like, playing snowboarding games when I was, like, eight years old on PS2, like 12, 13 years ago, man. I used to play them all the time, and it's just been a long time. And this feels I had one on the N64. I think, it, was it called 1080? 1080, yeah. Oh yeah. man, I love that game. 1080 snowboard. The yeah. flow, the flow of the snowboard going down the mountains in that game felt so I still nice. Have that. Yeah, that was yeah, a good I, game. I still have it. Yeah. A lot of, a lot Steep of is games. really, really good though, guys. I think it plays excellent. It's a lot of fun. I honestly might just pick it up when it comes out. I'm so, really thinking about so it now. We are talking Ubisoft. Does the game look like it did when it was revealed, or does it look like half of that game? Uh, yeah, it definitely does look like when it was revealed. It's not the most, like, amazing-looking game I've seen, but it looks good. It looks very good, I would say. Like, I have no real complaints about the visuals. I mean, it runs well, so... Now, yeah, I find fine. it hard to believe, Robbie. Is that all you've been playing for the last couple of days? Because that's what just came out, yeah. I haven't played much else. Ah, so it's been a slow week. All right. It's been a strange week for our viewers. Briar's been playing something other than Destiny. I went back in time... <laughs> yeah. and Don't tell nobody. <laughs> And I'm playing I mean, an extreme sports game. I haven't played in like 12 years, <laughs> so it's it's a nice change up of things. We'll see how long it takes for us to get back into our normal groove. But we do have a little bit of news. Robbie, would you like to get us started with our news this week, my friend? Absolutely. If I can uh, just find my spot here, there we go. All right, let's get started on the news, guys. So first thing today, 
is to do with Watch Dogs 2. So, Watch Dogs 2 may be teasing an unannounced Ubisoft title with an in-game mission. The in-game trailer shows a mysterious project set in space, with a watermark that suggests the game is destined to be announced at E3 2017. Kotaku has since confirmed that this is indeed a real game, and it's codenamed Pioneer. You're More hitting the table also... again, Robbie. I'm sorry. I sometimes it's a habit. Sorry. More details also say the game has since gone into troubled stages of development and is currently being retooled. Have you guys seen this trailer? I no. have not. I haven't even seen. I haven't even seen Watch Dogs Two. Yo, Watch Dogs yeah. Two. It turns out it's a fucking great game. It I, is. Who really? saw that coming? I heard it's really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm Are definitely you... buying it, man. Like everybody's. Really? Yeah, everybody's loving it. <laughs> You just blew my mind. That's another fucking brain fart. I, right? Who would have thought? I mean, with with the bad taste of the original game, I was really skeptical about this. Yeah, and yeah. Plus, plus, you know, me coming from an urban environment, seeing emo black dudes is a turn off. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Who is this cat? I ain't playing with this brother. No, I'm just kidding. Apparently, uh, it, it's got a lot of heart to it. The story is fun. It's, yeah, too. it's got a lot of personality. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be really cool. Uh, one of the one of the th scenes that I've heard a lot of people talk about is uh, there's two black characters in your like crew. Uh, one is the main character, and another guy works at like the Google, like the fake Google for the video game. And you go with him to his job, and he's they have this long conversation about how weird it is to be the only black guy that works at Google. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, and apparently it hits home too. It's not like it. It's not you know handled poorly which is impressive because that's a really that could have been gone really poorly <laughs> and, and, and this game has been out for a little bit of a little bit of time now so week, these right? that, yeah Five so days. these yeah. wow so it it's real it's real it's a good game yeah huh i might have to look into this the only thing to say is that um the drop do you guys remember that they promised like drop in drop out co-op and stuff that's, that's not, not working, working actually yeah they disabled that before launch because apparently the game was crashing and stuff like that and all that, but I mean, you can still invade people's games, which that was my favorite part of Watch Dogs One. Invading people's games that you was so up. much yeah, fun. That's cool. Oh you man, do, I love that. You can do that in Bloodborne too. Now, Robbie, let me ask you a question. I have not seen this reveal of uh, their their next project in the game. Can you kind of walk? Yeah, can you walk us through it for the people who haven't seen it? So, as soon as I saw this trailer, the first thing and. Not to bring up any controversy, was I thought of No Man's Sky, and not in a bad way, but just the way the game looks kind of has that same art style. And it's set in space. There's like these space stations floating by, and it's got like this western sort of twangy music playing. It's a really cool trailer, though. I would recommend watching. Yo, it. Yo, it's I mean, Firefly. It's... <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, straight on a Firefly. It's really cool, though. It was a good trailer, so definitely go watch it. And it seems like it's going to be a real game. So I'm looking okay. forward to that. All right. Well, that's a that cool way to market a new game. Very cool. Within another game, I think this is brilliant because yeah. Ubisoft was like, "Our games have just been leaking the last couple of years. Let's just put it in one of our games and announce it that way." It's have you guys cool. heard about the Frog Fractions thing? No. What's that? Uh, uh, so apparently, like all these indie games have had this little like uh, glyph in them, uh, and everybody's been wondering like, it's all these different games by different publishers have had the same glyph and everybody's been trying to figure out some kind of ARG, like what, what is this glyph? And a lot of people are thinking now that it's going to be frogs, frog fractions too. Did you guys play frog fractions? I no. have no idea what uh, that is. Owe it to yourselves to go check that game out. Frog is fractions. It, frog is it fractions. Like Frogger or what is it? I think it to talk about it would be to ruin the experience. Really? Is it oh. PC? <laughs> PC yeah. game? Yeah. But I mean, yeah, you can, yeah. Okay, frog fractions. Ooh. Add that to my notes. But yeah, the, it's like ARG. It's looking like it's gonna be pointing to the release of Frog Factions too. Oh, I remember. Yeah, there was a story on that. That's right. I remember people were freaking out about that. Mm -hmm. I forgot. It, it yeah. sounds like it's a pretty fun game. So now you've really piqued my interest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So moving on to the next little bit of news about Nintendo's next little handheld Toys R Us Canada may have accidentally revealed the price of the Nintendo switch. The device will reportedly cost 329 Canadian or 249 us with an additional bundle that comes with a pack in game and additional storage for 299 us. This is fucking I, awesome. That's good news, right. man. Like that so is good. the price point, right? I said 250, man. That's a sweet spot. Everybody can afford that. Yeah. 250 is, is a good point. That's true. 
Good Little price. Leslie, you know, Lindsay can get on the, the corner and make what she needs to make just to add to Bob's game collection. I mean, everybody can get 250. If you got 220, go make 30 bucks. It's easy to do. Mm -hmm. Good shit. Yeah, two fifty, man. I mean, that's not that's not really a financial decision. Dude, I want to know what the packing is, though. I want to know the packing game. It needs to be Mario. It needs to be Mario. It does, man. If they release this thing with a Mario it's, game, oh, it's over. It's over. It. Do you it's just over. think that new Mario game that we saw in the Switch trailer would that be ready for launch? Like, who knows where that is, too? It looks good. I don't know. It lo <laughs> It's. I mean, that's to me. Like when I saw that, that was the game that I saw during that reveal that actually had me screaming yeah. in my shop, and people were coming around trying to figure out what was wrong with me. I was over <laughs> cutting apart, and I was screaming because it was on my phone. And I had my earbuds in, and I looked over and I saw my quality manager and a couple other guys come out, and they were like, "Is everything okay?" And I pointed at my phone, I was like, "Yes, it is." It, it was, <laughs> that's hilarious. It, it was the Mario game that really got me hyped. That's yeah. The true spiritual successor to Mario 64. It, it looks so good. If they can pack that in, it's a wrap. Yeah, but $250 for the Switch, which is a brand new console. Phenomenal that's a great price, price point. Uh, also, it does take... Well, we think it does take SD cards, so you can add mm -hmm. more memory to it. So even if you don't choose for the 300 it's not like you're going to be memory limited. You know, you'll just be able to put in SD cards. But three hundred dollars with a packing game, whether it be Mario, whether it be Zelda, whether it be whatever, you know, that's a good value too. I, you know, I like I like that they're doing this. I like that it's coming out at that price point. I like everything yeah. I've seen about the Switch so far. I'm very excited for that console. Man, March, what we're what four months away? That's exciting, it's man. So yeah. soon. Yeah. I mean, just think of all you got to do to save up for that is just put a couple bucks aside for a month and it's done. Done yeah. deal. Awesome. I'm kind of thinking I'm just gonna sell one of my kids. I, I'm trying to think. You know, I'm adding one to the bunch in February. Yeah. The you got, you got one to spare. Easy. You got lots of kids. I, say, I, I bet now. they won't even miss one. Hell no. Well, the oldest one, right? He can cook, <laughs> clean. Totally forget about oh, it. You don't want to get rid of that one. Clean your car. Well, the second one's only a year younger. He's coming up. Yeah. So it's an easy replacement. There's what only what one gets house. more money? The really little ones or the really big ones? Well, the little like, ones. Are they, so, are they valued they per just, pound or... Well, the, the little ones are more like ornaments. They're just cute. And yeah, as they get older, sure. they become annoyances. The older ones you can have dialogue with, and they yeah. can do things for you. Mm -hmm. And especially if you raise them right, they're very respectful. So when you tell them no, they just say, yes, sir. It doesn't have to be dad. They'll still say, yes, sir. Uh-huh. Okay. All the parents All right. watching take this advice. How much How much can I get for, like, a 14-year-old? Uh, you know what? I was, I was looking uh, – Roughly five dollars. I, I was I was on the, the deep web and uh, yeah, I was looking. Think it's, it's worth it for you. You know, on, on the deep web, you can you can get a few grand for them. I mean, at least six grand. Oh, 14? wow, fourteen. Yeah, yeah, fourteen. That hey, that's a pretty decent used car. And you won't need the extra seat. <laughs> You're so <laughs> It's just like a used. I can car. get a, I can get a little sports car with no back seat <laughs> yeah, at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <So wicked. laughs> Horrible he'll, sell, he'll sell all his kids and then drive, pull off with a Lamborghini. Oh, you know, when I met him, when I met him, I had a Jeep. I bought a Jeep, right? And the first thing I did when I brought that Jeep home, it was a two door Jeep, the little Jeeps. I, the first thing I did when I brought that thing home was I took the top off and I took the back seat out and I put it down in the basement, right? Because I don't need a back seat. I'm a fucking bachelor. <laughs> I, need a, I need a seat over here and the top off. Yeah, it sounds like it's time to sell a kid there. Brad. Right? It's time. <laughs> it's time. They had a good run. And, I, and if you do it now, it'll be just in time for the Xbox Scorpio next year. The oh, Nintendo see, yeah, I got to save up that money, right? It's going to be an expensive year. Hell yeah. I mean, it can't be as expensive, expensive as this year, though. <laughs> this year was really expensive. I think it's too much bandwidth. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's just the internet. Okay, it's I think right. we're back. Oh, I think it's back live. Uh, Welcome to part two. Part, part two. Part <laughs> two. DC Thoughts Live, episode 133. Yep, we're back. Part two. Part right. two. It'll probably be part two on YouTube, too, because I don't know if I can stitch the two together. <laughs> hey, that works for all of us, okay? Yeah. I just want to apologize to everyone watching. Sorry right, about so that. We had a brief outage, but we're back, so it should be all good. Blame your local internet. It had nothing yeah. to do with us. So <clears throat> continuing on, just in case you missed it, a new rumor suggests that Apple is working on making augmented reality glasses, which will be able to wirelessly connect to an iPhone and display image, images and information to the wearer. 
Yeah, now can they can put those advertisements in the real world. You don't have to look <laughs> down at your phone anymore. They can advertise Nordstrom's and Starbucks and and tell you where they are. And... Yeah, yeah. You're only Man. you're only you're only five minutes away from spending seven dollars on a coffee. Oh fuck that! <laughs> oh sweet, use your glasses and bring it up. Yeah, here we'll we'll point you in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got a job that's good enough for $7 coffee. <laughs> You're going to make me quit drinking that stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, augmented reality, I think everybody's stepping in on this. AR, VR, it, appear, it, it appears that they know that we're at that moment in, in history with modern technology where this is going to explode. AR is yep. going to be big. It's going to be big. It's a matter of time. They got to get the technology just right. We saw... The Google Glasses was, you know, it, it was a first try. I don't even know if it was a first try. It was really just a beta. They called yeah. it a beta, you know, yeah. when they announced it or when they released it. But if you think about all of the things that AR could do in your world, you know, your GPS when you're driving could be AR. Awesome. You know, you, you could be gaming in AR, like in the world. Imagine playing like a shooter in your neighborhood, you know, yeah, with this is augmented reality, you know. Imagine, have you ever heard of that Zombies Run uh, kind of yeah. game for yeah. iPhone that you listen to the headphones and it tells you when the zombies are getting closer so you speed up and slow down yeah. while you're running? Imagine having that. You turn around and they're there. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, there's shit. so many cool things like gaming, but also like, you know, imagine you're an architect and you want to sh show what this new building's going to look like to your clients. You go out to the site that you're going to build it on and put on the glasses mm. and boom, you can see yeah. the building. You know, like it's, it's so many applications. Wow. Yeah, I think I think AR is going to be bigger than VR ultimately. I mean, mm. just hearing hearing that pitch that you just hit us with yeah. is excited the hell out of me. Now you did bring that up probably close to six eight months ago. The uh, whole idea of doing like a first person shooter in your neighborhood using something like Google Maps and AR oh, that would lose that would be, so that would be cool. incredible. That'd yeah, be I, that's yeah, that's been a dream of mine. It'll for a happen, long bro. time. It's like somehow if they could if they could build like a Call of Duty game but the maps are, get pulled from Google Maps so you could play like anywhere in the world. <laughs> That'd be so fun. Wow. I mean, it's hey. it's going to happen. It's yeah. it's we're at that point in history where, you know, new technology is being born every 5 minutes and especially with video game talented development. You know, there are guys out there who really want to make this happen. I'm sure we'll have we'll see it probably within the next 10 years. You know, we'll be a little bit older, but not too old to play that shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm excited for it. So okay, the, old the dinosaurs. Yep. EA, I did uh, a story about this. EA has teased this week that it plans to bring a few games from its biggest franchises to the Nintendo Switch. Mm. So no third parties. Be? What do you guys think? Could that be? They're talking. Like, well, yeah. They were mm. talking. Place. Uh, they're talking PS4 and Xbox One games. Yep, Cap Capcom is doing the same thing. I did like, do a story. EA about said they were going to support the Wii U too, and they very little did. Mm. Yeah, you just killed my dreams, brother. <laughs> they did though. Just they said that. It. That's yeah, true. They said they were on board with the Wii U, and then you know. Well, yeah. Capcom is also doing the same thing. They're heavily looking into porting Xbox One and PS4 games to the Switch. So it sounds like at least if they're interested. And that's a good sign. I mean, yeah, everybody's I'd interested. Rather, I'd rather hear them say, hey, look, it looks good. It looks like we, we're going to be able to do this and just hear them all be quiet and say, hey, man, that's not the direction we want to go with our development and our publishers. The so, test I mean, will be like the launch games. You know, there will be a few third-party games that launch with the title or launch with the console. If they sell, then that'll, you know, then that'll encourage more games to come out. If those sell, then we might see this be like a real, a real platform. If they don't sell, if only the Nintendo games sell, then, oh, no. you know, EA, Ubisoft, all those companies, they, they have a very short leash for Nintendo right now. If yeah. they don't sell on launch, then they're not going to. That platform has to really prove itself within, I'd say, the first six months to a year or third parties are not going to stick around. Like, that's yeah. crucial for them. It's going to do well. You guys mark my words. That uh, I think the speak. console I itself is going to do well, but I don't know if there's going to be third party support for it. Yeah. Mm. Let's keep our fingers crossed, man. Yeah. All right. So according to producer Sam Raimi, The Last of Us movie is currently at a standstill due to conflicts between Sony Pictures and lead writer Neil Druckmann. I'm actually happy to hear this because Druckmann wrote The Last of Us. He knows what The Last of Us is all about, the way it should be presented to its audience. And if he has issues with the way the direction that they're going with this film, 
uh, and obviously Sony feels differently. I prefer to stay at a you know perpetual standstill for them than for them to release a product that's sub Neil Druckmann standards. How do you guys feel about it? Yeah, and I mean like this is pretty similar to the Uncharted movie too, where I'm like I don't know what the purpose for this is and why it needs to happen. I get why they're doing it, right? Because they think it would make money. Like it's a big franchise and yeah, exactly it would you know it would rain a little bit. <laughs> but uh I don't know. Like I don't know if this is ever gonna happen. And I personally don't really care to see a Last of Us movie. I just think it wouldn't be very good. I don't know. I just it just feels like they're doing this for it's gonna be kind of a rush thing. I just don't know. You know, when I hear about this, you know, the Halo movie, the uh, Uncharted film. I'm skeptical God, of all of them. God yeah. of War. There's you know, a Watch we, Dogs movie, too. Where's that? Oh, God. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, Assassin's Creed looks like it's going to be good. I got to say it. It does. That it has looks, potential. Yep. It looks like it's going to be a really, really good film. And and if that can turn this whole ship around, you know, we could have talented writers, talented directors get behind these franchises and, and give them the respect that, that they deserve. Because, you know, as big of a Resident Evil fan as I am, the movies let me down wholeheartedly. I know a lot of people say, man, those movies are awesome for what no, they are. No, they're not. A lot of people <laughs> love, hey, man, which, which, which one are we on now? Like the seventh one? Those movies, the reason they've been able to continually make them is because they continually do well in theaters. People love to watch them. because they, they're they kinda... dirt cheap to make, so they only got to get like 10 people to go see them. That's but true. They're, they're, I've got into arguments. I've done videos about this. I've gotten to people in my own comment section saying, man, those movies are awesome, dude. They might not be like the game, but they're still good films. That's how some people feel. To me, I'd rather Each a film. Own, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, I respect everybody's opinion. But for me, if you're going to make a game a movie based on a video game, you need to give respect to that original content. You yeah, need you to gotta convey, respect the property. Yeah. You got to convey that to the people. Whatever made the game successful needs to be conveyed on a film. And if they can't do the same thing with The Last of Us, then it's going to tarnish what The Last of Us is. And we just don't need to see that, in my opinion. There's a, that's a cool you. world, though, to explore. And I think there's a lot of stories they could tell in a world kind of like that. But I'd rather see them make a video game than a, than a movie. Honestly, me too. Video, like, you know what I mean? just, they don't, I, I, video games they, don't translate to movie well. It's just the thing. I think they could, but they just haven't been done well. And that's what I feel about this and Uncharted and a lot of movies. I'm like, I love these properties, but and they could be awesome. But I just, well, I'm worried if they're not awesome, then let, how let am I going to feel about it? Who cares? Let me tell you why I think Briar is totally right. Briar is totally right in this situation, and this is why. Video games are a prolonged story. Like Some games, it could actually work on film. But if you try to tell a story like The Last of Us, which takes you 15 hours to play and experience and get a feel for in two hours, there's a lot of that world that's going to be missing. But certain games would probably do better as films than they would have games. Order 1886 is a perfect example. It's a very short game. It's a mediocre gaming experience. But the story was engaging enough that if they'd done something on a film, you know, a two-hour movie versus a four, five, six-hour game, that was really subpar. It could have done better. I think that the time constraints from you know creating a game and converting that to a film, a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour film, are the major issues. It's just so much story that goes into a game, so much character development. You care about these characters, things they've gone through, and then when you see a film, none of that really exists. And for people who have never played the game, it leaves a lot to be desired. That's my opinion. That's an excellent point. I agree with that, yeah. All right. Respawn Entertainment's Vince Zampella, Vince Zampella says he is unsure if the studio will make another Titanfall game after Titanfall 2. The game has done very well from a critical standpoint, but it needs to have done well enough for sales uh, in sales for a sequel to be likely. Yeah, I mean, I think, they watched it right in the middle of, uh, what is it, is Battlefield? Is game not Call selling Duty? well? Is Titanfall 2 not selling well? Is it just doing critically uh. well? Yeah, probably not because the window it was pushed into between Battlefield and COD. I think it just got slaughtered. I wouldn't oh, be surprised. Shit. Yeah, it, it sucks because it's a great game. But it's it getting slaughtered great. by who? I mean, to me, that's a really hard decision. I'm not really into Battlefield, but I know a lot of people are. Are people just buying Call of Duty just like crazy right now, even though this game didn't appear to be that great? The, the, no, I think it's Battlefield. Look, Battlefield came out a week before Titanfall, and then. Todd came out a week after. It had no time to kind of breathe and to. I mean, it's it's a new franchise. Battlefield's not a new franchise. Call of Duty's not a fran new franchise. Titanfall Two is a new franchise, so it needs yeah. a little bit of room to breathe. It needs a, a little time to get its own, you know, kind of player base. 
People were still playing Battlefield 1 when Titanfall 2 came out. Battlefield 1 guys are hardcore. A lot of them are. And then COD guys, we all know they're hardcore. So, like, they, they put this game in a slot. It reminds me of what they did at Tomb Raider it's last Tomb year. Tomb Raider. Yeah. It's like, why would you release it now? We on the, on the flip side, too. though, do I really need a Titanfall 3? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, personally, if Respawn did another, like, whatever their next game would be, I would want them to do not quite a Titanfall game, but something similar, you know? Like, not a Titanfall, but maybe kind of a similar idea. I'm going to check it out whatever they do, because those guys are good developers. Like, they make good multiplayer shooters. We know they're making a Star Wars game, too. Yeah, I that's exciting. That's that is very exciting. Uh, much more exciting than Battlefront. Um, but, I mean, Titanfall... Two is a cool game, but is that world like something that you really want to explore is it more like of? Mass Effect, yeah. You know, is it? Uh, it's it's the reason I like that game is for its multiplayer. I like the so single player, but not because of the story, just because they did so many cool things with the the way the game played. Right? Yeah. It had nothing to do with the story or the world or any of that. It's because that multiplayer is and the multiplayer long. is fantastic. The single player was fantastic, but not because of the story, because of the gameplay. Those guys mm. know how to make good playing games. I don't give a shit yes. what the title on the box is. I'm going to buy the next one, too. Yeah, they're Infinity Ward. They know what yeah, they're that, doing. That, that makes Ward. a whole lot of sense. It, it sounds like that the actual, the world, the characters, and that environment doesn't leave much to the imagination. It's not really questions lingering for you. You don't really want to know what's going on in that world anymore. You've seen I don't anything. remember any part of that campaign. Got you. <laughs> All I Got remember you. is the, the cool-ass gameplay elements. Mm. That's what I remember. Yeah. I don't remember anything about like who the did time what or where. The platforming. That's what I love. <laughs> they yeah. they should have let, let Bioware uh, help them with their story and their character development, and it might have actually left more to the imagination. Mass Effect is like Star Trek or Star Wars. People love that world, the characters, the planets. Yeah. And it seemed like this is kind of the direction that they wanted to go, but it sounds like they failed. So uh, it really sounds like EA failed for them. EA yeah. screwed it up. Yeah, it's and that that's and as far as I'm concerned, that's two strikes for EA as far as Respawn's concerned. Because mm -hmm. Respawn apparently did not know that that Titanfall 1 was going to be an Xbox One. exclusive. Yep, didn't know. Like, how fucked up is that? <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah, Man. and then they send Titanfall 2 out to dry by putting it in front of Battlefield 1 and, or between Battlefield 1 and, and COD. Like, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's like Rise of the Tomb Raider. It's like we all knew it was not going to end well. Like, why do they do it anyway? I don't yeah. Know. I don't Rise know. of the Tomb Raider is an awesome game. Yeah, and it, it is. It Thankfully, that, that got re-released. I think that game actually did pretty well. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Remedy Entertainment, developers of Alan Wake and Quantum Break, are teasing an announcement of their next game, which will be coming soon. I haven't seen this teaser, or I don't have any information on it. So, Robbie, can you please paint... You know, paint the picture with paint words. A picture. It's not even really a teaser. It's literally well, the it. game's director just saying, like, I'm Sam. I don't remember what his name was, but he just said basically our next game announcement's coming soon. That's all he said. Are you guys excited about this after the greatness that was Quantum Break? I, I heard like Quantum Break was not that good. This, so. <laughs> it absolutely wasn't. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm not a hater, man. I'm not. I, it just wasn't a good game. I know some people say it was. It just... God, it was not. It just it felt so broken. And I have heard some good things. I heard the boss fight, the end boss fight was terrible though. That's yeah. what I've heard the most. Every the powers were lackluster. The characters sucked. You're like this Jack Joyce. Who the hell names their protagonist Jack Joyce? It's like and, a Marvel like character's name, like Peter yeah. Parker or something. Yeah, Jack yeah. Joyce. Jack Joyce. He's, yeah. He's an anti-hero that just was unlikable. And I was like, it's just, and the game's mechanics suck. The powers are horrible. But let me stop because that's not what we're here for. Ubisoft says it will be moving away from story and narrative in its upcoming titles, such as the next Assassin's Creed game. There will be less of an emphasis on the story and more about world building. Fuck. What's I'm happening? disappointed to hear this too. Like, because I really appreciate games, even if it's an open world game with like a really good story and narrative to it. And this kind of makes me disappointed because they were already moving in that direction. And I like games with a good I story. I don't really understand what this means. What the hell are they doing? What's the difference between world building and writing a story? It's just about like exploring the open world. Like, they're basically not going to make you care about the characters, the story that's going on. It's going to be just about the world, basically, which. Mm. 
I don't know. It just. I don't really get that. Like, how do you build a world without telling a story? Uh, man, I could tell you. I don't know. Well, the, the the thing that alarms me about that little bit of news is that Ubisoft, one of their biggest franchises, or used to be, is Assassin's Creed. And it became popular and well known partly because of the story. It was intertwining, yeah. and just to hear them say that, I mean, they should say that about their other games that aren't aren't relying so heavily on narrative. But for Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed fans to hear that, it's got to be a little disappointing. I'm not a big I'm not an Assassin's Creed fan. I still got a free copy to give away. But, you know, for as someone who really enjoyed these games and enjoyed how they all kind of joined one another, you know, in the mythos, to hear that the stories are going to take a backseat to what you can do in the world. Hey, it could work out. Mario 64 doesn't have that much of a story, but the world is fucking amazing. Yeah, I mean, open world enough. games are still great. I still love them, but at the same time, like, it just, yeah, it, it makes me a little sad to hear this, because story, a good story deserves to be appreciated, and just throwing it out the window is kind of shitty. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I, I wish them all the best. I want all publishers and developers to do well, because it, 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 it benefits all of us, you know, mm -hmm. all the gamers out here, the people who want to yep. play these games, uh, and hopefully they know what they're doing. You know, we've seen lots and lots of pub publishers and developers make asinine decisions that have negatively affected them uh, in the eyes of the public. And hopefully this is not one that affects Ubisoft. And our last, our last bit of news for Beastly Thoughts, episode 133. The Game Awards 2016 will take place on December 1st, 2016. Naughty Dog leads the nominee list with a total of eight nominations, including Game of the Year contender for Uncharted 4 at Thieves' End. And they're going to win that. Yes, yeah, I would think hope. so. Well... Anything else? I mean, it seems pretty... Well, if, if you got to ask, they're going to win it. Because if there's nothing else that's that big, that exciting, Uncharted 4, that game stole my heart this year, man. Yep. I it, can't it, think yeah. of anything. Yeah. I, Doom, I think, should get some awards, but it's not going to win Game of the yeah. Year. It's no, Doom. definitely not. I think the nominations for Game of the Year were also... Titanfall 2, which I was surprised to see. Uh, Overwatch, I think. Ooh, Doom was on there, too. Ooh, Overwatch could do something there. Yeah, Overwatch definitely. is an amazing game. I wish we got together and played sometime. It really is a fun, fun game. Yeah. It, it, it's everything that we've always said we hate it. But I actually... And I'm the first one to say I was wrong about this particular instance. And that way I can't say that in the future I'm 100% against this whole idea of an always online game with no single-player campaign. That is exactly what we've always fought against. You know, as console gamers, we never wanted this. Overwatch is 100% that. You actually have to watch the videos for character development online just to see what your characters are into. But the game is so fun. You know, there's no real story. There's no campaign. You just go online and it's always online and it's everything we've always hated. But it's a crazy situation where Blizzard has found a way to make me love it. It's mm -hmm. just, well, not as much now after this it latest update. Well. You know, this latest update. Well. You play, it on, replayability. you play it on PS4 or do you play it on a, on a PC? PS4. PS4. I mean, yeah, it's a great game. It should game. be an interesting game of the year discussion. I could see either one of those games winning that. Yeah. What have been some of you guys... What do you guys think should be on that list? Short list. Two or three games that you played this year that you'd like to see at least mention. Doom, Overwatch. Doom, sure. Yeah. And uh, Uncharted. Yeah, I would basically say the same. And I'd also put uh, Inside on that list. That game blew me away. Just that was amazing. Let's mm. say that. So Wow, and there's been a lot of games played this year. And those are the... I got to agree with you guys. I do. I 100% agree with you. We'll see what happens. Uh, my, my money still. You guys let us know what you think in the comments below. Who do you think is going to get game of the year? I think Uncharted 4, it's kind of... It's cleared its path for that. For that nomination and that win, I do. I feel yeah. like that's the favorite for sure. I, I mean, I'm yeah. trying to think of what came out this year that could that could have bested it. Doom is a great game. It is yeah. real. Everything about that game is phenomenal. The game plays well. Uh, it's it has one of the best frame rates I've ever played in a first person shooter on a console. It looks unbelievable, and the story it all makes sense. It's a great game. Multiplayer is fun, uh, but I just feel like it's great. But it's not as great as as the experience of uh, Uncharted Four. But it'll definitely be there. They're going to take home some awards for sure. Doom. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, well deserved too. I hope Doom does too. I mean, I think what they achieved with that game was it took everybody by surprise. 
Definitely. Yeah, I, and and the same thing with Overwatch. It, you know, I I was kind of late to Overwatch, but just the the fact that they were able to, to you know, kind of do the unthinkable with console games and this online only multiplayer only kind of thing and for it to be as popular as it is and all these fans of these different characters and to see all this new stuff coming out for it. I mean, it's just a phenomenal thing that Blizzard was able to do. They're doing like, Have you guys seen what they're doing with uh, their eSports League, too? Like no. they're They're doing a cool thing. I, I, I only saw they eh, – this was probably a month ago or three weeks ago. But they did this big thing where they had all teams made up of national players. So, like, they had, like, an Argentinian team and an American team and a French team and a Spanish team. And, uh, like, it was really cool because you get to root. It's kind of like the Olympics. You get to root for your country. Uh, but theoretically, if they continue to do it over time, like, you could get behind a team. As opposed to esports has a problem in my eyes that you can either follow a player or follow a team, but the turnover on the, the players on the teams for the – for many teams is so fast that mm -hmm. you can't really, it's hard to connect. Keep up. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. it's not like having a favorite baseball or football team where you see the same players year after year. You do see some turnover for sure. But like, you know, 80% of that team is the same as it was last year. So you can, you're still rooting for those same guys. You're still that Jersey you bought last year. Mm -hmm. You still wear still this matters, year, you know, so. you know, yeah. and I think, I thought that was interesting by like kind of making like, teams based on countries and then people compete to be on those teams you know make that a really big achievement to get on that team your national team that's pretty cool yeah Ooh. i'm excited to see what happens before we end the show i want to let the, the people in the audience know that during the pre-show i let briar and robbie know that my wife and i have nailed down a name that we're 95 percent sure we're going to use it's, it's a name that yes it yes it is <laughs> or rabbit rabbit's a good second choice too that is a good second choice Briar Rabbit Beastly, <laughs> the second. No, um, King of Beastly is a good name too. Remember that one? Yeah. The name that we're going to go with, and and it sounds more and more every day like she's more and more sure this is her idea, and it's something I agreed to. Is Ellie? That's a good name. Ellie, Ellie, and you guys might recognize that name is a very popular video game character from The Last of Us. Also, a name that will get you uh, an immediate reservation at a job interview. You know, I mean, we could have picked anything. You know, if I named her Briar Rabbit Beastly, I'm sure that, you know, any job interview would say, yeah, I don't want to. That's like, like Briar. Briar's a good name. So you have it's a hard a, time at school, too. Briar's a strong <laughs> name. It's a strong name. Yes, it is. <laughs> strong in, in probably the, the worst kind of ways for a young lady. <laughs> Briar it's, Robbie it's, Beastly, DJ Man says. <laughs> Briar Robbie Beastly. Got to put a little bit of everybody in there. But it sounds like it's going to be Ellie more and more every day. Uh, that's what my wife was calling her today when she was kicking around in her stomach. It's so cool laying next to you know your pregnant wife and you look at her stomach and you see shit just moving all out, getting kicked. And you're like, God, if this is happening to me. I would be in the hospital right now. Right. And you, just, you just watch a woman do what they do. It's truly amazing. And I'm very, very blessed. Created. Yeah, yeah I, it's awesome. I told her. I don't she know that like, feeling. Ellie's a great I, I name, but she'll Thanks, always man. be king of beast slow to us. Yes. <laughs> Personally, I like Briar Robbie Beastly. So when you go to, to pretty good, uh, you know, interview, got like, a oh, ring to it. Got a ring. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be remembered for sure. Absolutely, it would. Would be easy to forget. <laughs> uh, that sounds like more of a professional. You know, when she's going out to like a, a professional setting, or even going to a ball. You know, she gets out of the you know out of the limousine and says, "Excuse me, you are." Briar, Robbie Beasley. <laughs> we, we were expecting. We were you. expecting you. Yeah. No, it's, you don't need to show us your ticket. We've got you on the list for sure. It's BRB, she's here. You're in the VRB. BRB is list. here. <laughs> BRB has arrived. It actually sounds like such a fancy name now that we're saying it. I don't mm. know. I don't know what it is. It's yeah, fancy. It's, Definitely. It's eloquent. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I want sure. to share that with everybody because you guys. So are eloquent. They'll have the pinky race while they're uh, drinking tea. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So fucking stupid. <laughs> you know, I just have a vision in my mind. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. That was a good show, guys. Yeah. Good job. Always, always. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. Show. Yeah, thank you guys very much for hanging out with us. I really do appreciate it. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Watch Bye, both parts. Both parts, guys.
I'll try. I'll try and stitch them together on YouTube. I think I should probably do that. <laughs> that 